Hi guys, welcome to another video from Paul here at CCTV Systems UK. Today we're going to talk again about intrusion detection. Uh, two reasons for that. One, we've been absolutely inundated with emails and phone calls and messages about intrusion detection because of, secondly, this camera here that you can see in the foreground. It's the Hikvision uh, Turbo HDX with the HD wide angle lens, built in PIR sensor. It's part of the color view range, so it's got a white light in the center of the bezel, so it's always in color, uh, even on the night. It has the red and blue flashing strobes on each side of it, which go off, and the case has the perforated holes in each side of it, so that the sound of the siren can come out, which is built into the camera. So, People have been emailing and asking, um, after seeing the video about the false alarm filter, asking if you can use these uh, strobe flashing lights and the siren on intrusion detection. The answer is yes, you certainly can. So, uh, we're going to do that video for you today. And to make sure this is a fair video, as we always try to do when we put cameras side by side, this camera that you can see here, the Turbo X, I've installed it at home in my garden position. As you can see, my bit of uh, lawn here, uh, a little bit of walkway, conservatory, conservatory door, and my jacuzzi. So, let's do a video and show you how to use intrusion detection. We right-click to bring up the menu, left-click on system, and then left-click on event. Right, so that's a normal event which is motion detection. You've all seen these squares before, certainly if you've seen our videos. Video tampering, video loss, the alarm, input and output, and the exceptions. We don't need these. We want a smart event. So the next one down, we click here. Line crossing detection, which we've done previously. I'm going to do another one though for you because there are subtle differences between light, line crossing and intrusion detection. Intrusion detection there, which is what we're going to focus on today. And the next video will be about the audio exception. And the reason why audio exception is going to be next is because if you look at this camera here, which is a miniature dome, you can see it's got a little microphone in the top. They're very hard to spot, certainly in this light. But that's what's coming next, so keep an eye out for that. But today... Intrusion detection. So there's our scene, which is our garden. I've put it into camera number one for us. So where is this handy? Where do we use it in domestic circles? Well, walkways and driveways are winners for intrusion detection. If someone's going to come and burgle you, the chances are they're not going to run across the front lawn. They won't run across the back lawn neither. They'll be sneaking around. So, driveways, walkways, and round conservatories. Because unfortunately, conservatives, conservatories there are soft targets. They really are. Just about every burglary, you know, we get called to, and we get called to so many, it's still going on day in and day out. Chances are they've got in on a kitchen window or a conservatory, and it's usually the conservatory. So, let's get this up and running. Tick the enable box, and then go down to draw area and left click on there. And what this will allow us to do is draw four dots. I'll put one here, 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 and here, just so you can see them, and I'll apply it. As you can see, the DVR has joined up the dots for us, and it's got hashtag one. So that's our first intrusion detection area there. Now it says virtual plane number one. You can click the button here and there's four. So you can have four going at any one time, which is brilliant for around your conservatory. Again, soft spot on houses. So time threshold, not too important. It's set at zero. And that is the amount of time someone has got to be in this area that we've drawn for intrusion, click it in the middle, it's one second, click it on the end and it's two seconds. I just leave it on zero. This is more important, sensitivity. 
Now you can see it's set at 60% here because obviously I've done these videos before. So let's drop it down to its setting that it's normally on, which is 50. So all we've done is enable it and draw that area and apply it. Simple as that. Arming schedule, they're all in blue, constant. 24 hours a day, if you click the non button, you can scrub any of these areas out that you like. Some people might not have it on on a night when they're in the house, but just have it on while, I don't know, seven while six when they're at work, just in case someone comes into the back garden. If you're a single person and you've got nobody else in the house and you're at work, what more can you ask for than that? It's protecting your property while you're out grafting. We love it. Linkage section. You've all seen this before. Tick that, you get the full screen monitoring. It puts the full screen up. Audible warning is the bleeper on the DVR and the notify surveillance centre, which is obviously the push notification through to your mobile device if you have the DVR networked and you've located it on your mobile phone. Here's the settings for the light. Cam 1, number 1 is light and Cam 1, number 3 is sound. Don't worry about the alarm output, we're not interested in that at the moment. So to answer your questions from all the emails that we've had about this camera, if you click that and that, the light and the siren will go off as well. Now, it's such a nice day and I like my neighbours. You won't see the light and I'm not going to upset them with the sound, but it does work. It's as simple as that. Click them and they work. Let's stick to the ones that are a little bit quieter, which is the audible warning and notify surveillance centre. Click, click, apply. There you are, guys. That's how easy it is. Go to area settings. I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it. Area number one, it's enabled and it's set at 50%. So I'm going to be your guinea pig today. I'm going to walk outside and see if we can set it off at 50% sensitivity. So at 50%, with a quite a small area, it has to be said. It didn't get me on the way out, but it got me on the way in. So, this is the model of the story, the sensitivity. So, instead of being on 50%, let's drag that up to 60 and press apply. That's all I've done. We've not changed the uh, motion uh, grid for the intrusion. We've just increased the sensitivity a bit. Let's try once more. I don't need to keep walking. As you can see, that's worked. So, sensitivity is key. It's the king to everything. That's what we want to get correct. Now, don't be tempted just to push this up very high because you'll get lots of false alarms from birds jumping across your driveway and the biggest garden offender, which is cats, of course. Cats will walk in and out of your garden. They don't care about boundaries. And if they come down here and walk through the square and onto the grass, it's going to go off. So basically, you want it so it's sensitive enough for a human, but no more. And I mean that. The only time you'll go up to the higher settings is, of course, if your motion grid is very small, let's say it's up here, and it's a long way from the camera. You need that extra sensitivity then. But if you can keep it off the floor, if you're having lots of issues with cats, that's good. Now... You can have four intrusion detection squares up at any one time. And I'll just click here. And there you go. One, two, three, and four. So if I draw number two, click draw area. And I'll put four dots up here near the conservatory and apply it. I hope you can see that up there. Obviously, it says hashtag two. And if I go back to number one. Hashtag one. Always keep something around your conservatory if you can. Remember what we said. It is the weak spot on a house. Conservatories are 99 times out of 10 around the back of the building, which is quiet, away from the street, and that's where you get your point of entry for burglaries. And we go out to so many burglaries. It's still going on, guys. You might not have heard of one for a while. 
trust me, we see them day in, day out. So if you can use those detection squares around your conservatory, set it through the day when you're at work, that's got to be a good thing. It's, it's essential, really, it really is. So there you go. That's how easy it is to set this up. When you finish with it, I've just drawn number two up there near the house. Press clear. Clear regions, yes, and apply. So you can take them off, press the draw button again, and draw it again. Da da. So we know that area number one is still there. It's still set at 60%. It's on 24 hours. I'll just go into the linkage. Audible warning, notification my phone's been going off in my pocket. I'll put the full screen monitoring on as well and apply it. Go to the live view. There you go, look, it's on four screens. This is an eight-way DVR, but you can see the full screen monitoring in action as well. So there you go, intrusion detection. Brilliant piece of kit. All you've got to do is spend the time drawing the right areas and getting the right sensitivity. It really is that simple. Just be patient and tailor the system to your property because they're all different. They're all different. So this has been another video from Paul, CCTV Systems UK, about intrusion detection. Uh, if you want any more information or would like one installing, obviously drop us an email. You clearly know where we are because we've got an inbox absolutely full about this camera. It's it's so popular. It's actually getting quite difficult to keep in stock. Um, always have a look at our Facebook page, which has lots of tips in there. Um, anything from, you know, setting videos like you've got here down to keeping your car keys safe in your home. Um, always good to have tips. Remember, we're the good guys, they're the bad guys. Let's keep them out of our houses and out of our businesses. So this is Paul, logging off at CCTV Systems UK. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.